I think rehearsing and playing live music and drinking for us has kind of always gone hand in hand, for better and for worse. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by Michter's and 291 Colorado Whiskey. And joining me on the Fred Minnick Show, uh, Houndmouth, you know, Shane and Matt, how are you boys doing? We're doing great. Wonderful. Thanks for having us. So you're, you're, uh, you're in Indiana. You're practically, you're in New Albany, so you're practically in Kentucky. Uh, I got to imagine that like bourbon's been a little bit in your blood you know, for a while. Totally. Yeah. Growing up, I would always steal sips from my old man's. <laughs> and yeah, it's just always been around. Yeah, whiskey and coke tastes like home, pretty much. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's a strong, strong nostalgia. Yeah, I mean there is there is something uh, there is something really you know special about those those early days of the first sips, all legal of course. We all waited of until that was. until that uh, proper moment uh, <laughs> when we turned twenty one. But uh, yeah, it's really great to connect with you all because I I, I love um, you know you're in a you're in a genre of uh, of music I love. I love uh, harmony, harmonious sound. I love like one of my favorite bands of all time was Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Yeah. And nice. and and you know you all like Band of Horses, bands like that that have that same kind of um, you know range and chemistry and and vocals. It's it's so to me it's it's so much fun to listen to because it's real talent, you know, it's real music and so much, so much of music is kind of like done and the mixing and stuff afterward now. So it's, I've been, I've been listening to you all for probably since the early days because I try to listen to like the local bands, but, and you would, Louisville kind of adopts, you know, New Albany, you know, anything that comes from New Albany, they say it's from Louisville. So, so I've been listening to you all for a while and it's just, it's great to connect with you all and, and sip some whiskey. Same. Same. Yeah, when we grew up on like, when we were like 18 and stuff, like, you know, the jacket, band of horses, all that. So then when we started like, you know, becoming of age, that was kind of our genre or that kind of what we kind of fell into that scene, you know? Yeah. Does that like, uh, is, is that, are those bands that you kind of aspired to, you know, My Morning Jacket and, and Band of Horses? Yeah, I got. I actually got into My Morning Jacket a little bit like later, but... Uh, I remember seeing like a uh, old crow medicine show when I was mm -hmm. pretty, you know, in my te like late teens and uh, like Dave Rawlings machine and police brothers and just seeing them on a stage and being like, Whoa, this is exactly what I want to do. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and you all, you all definitely have a diverse band. You've got a lot of different uh, directions you can go. Uh, kind of like the whiskey we have here today. I, I sent you some stuff that's like all over the place. Um, I sent you a, a two ninety one. So this is a, this is a bourbon that is finished with Aspen Staves in Colorado. I sent you a uh, four grain bourbon from a brand called Penelope. It's one that's on the rise. Yeah. And then uh, I sent you is what is kind of a juggernaut in the in the circles of bourbon, and that's the old Fitzgerald uh, bottle and bond decanter. This uh -huh. is a four, this is a fourteen year old. Yeah, did we get that one. Uh huh. We did. Did you already so drink we, it? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, He's you like, see, because we rescheduled, and those and those tasters were sitting around, <laughs> and the Penelope and that guy. Yeah, you just held up. Was that was tops incredible? <laughs> <laughs> but you do have yeah. some left, right? Of course, we have. Yeah, we got we got a Michter's, we got this boy, and we have Peelers. <laughs> we have a little bit of Peelers left. You got you you got just a just a little bit of a nip. You got a little bit yeah. of a nip. Just All right, which it. which Michter's did I send you? Because I don't have that one right here. So let me see, make sure I got the right one. I sent you the so ten year the ten year single barrel. 
All right, I'm gonna go grab. I'm gonna go grab that one because I didn't. Uh, I didn't bring that one up here for my tasting. Let me for grab sure. it real quick because I see it right here, actually, on my sheet, and I just grab. I didn't grab it, but uh, hmm. it's it's a good one. I tell you what, as I as I'm doing that one, let's go ahead and start with the Michter's ten year old, yeah. and and uh, or actually, I'll let you talk amongst yourselves about whether you want to sing, play pre whiskey. Or after whiskey, so people, everybody's different. Everybody's different. I'm gonna go grab the mixers. Yeah, I thought she might have slipped out. Yes, yeah, she did. So how do, how does I mean when you when you have the uh, when vocals are so important, you know, to your to your music. I mean, they're important to every music, but some some bands it's obviously more important than others. Do you keep yourself from drinking whiskey beforehand? Do you wait till it's after? Does it bother you at all? I mean, where do where do you all sit with the whiskey and singing? So writing, writing for me usually sober, always. Mm -hmm. Just because it's like hard to access any sort of emotion when you're when you're drinking because it mm -hmm. just kind of suppresses everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, in terms of practice, like. So we've just been practicing in this house since we, since we started, since like 2011. And um, we would always, it was kind of a big part of our lives, just going down the street to this bar, the Irish exit and hanging out, coming back, maybe bringing people back from the bar, rehearsing, you know, I think rehearsing and playing live music and drinking for us has kind of always gone hand in hand for better and for worse. That sounds like it sounds like a new Albany special there, you know. Yeah. Do you all ever go to that? Uh, did you ever go to? Um, um, I think it was called the Exchange, the Pub Exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love. Yeah, we that. go there like often. I love that place. It's uh, great. And then it's and then there was uh, that really good barbecue place. It closed down. Feast. Uh, Feast. Yeah, Feast that was that was, place was great. But what yeah. I loved about what I love about New Albany is that really creepy old thrift store where there's like, you know, like dolls in there that you know are like haunted and stuff. Oh like it, yeah. I think that's next to Little Chef, right? Um I think he's are you talking about the one right by the exchange? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well you'll be happy to know that, that is no more. What happened Something to else it? Now. I don't know. Like maybe the ghosts. <laughs> It was when I was in there. It was so creepy. Yeah. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> anyhow, uh, <laughs> how do you all feel about starting this off with some whiskey, or do you want to play first? Yeah, let's start it off with some whiskey. That's what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> now, as I as I pour the the Michter's ten year old, and you all do as well. Uh, let's let's tell everyone how the band name came to be i always think that's a fun interesting story when you have such a quirky band name like yours right we were we've been recording in this house since day one and the windows are all the original windows so it's every everything from the outside bleeds in we're actually right next to a firehouse too so there's constantly sirens and we're mm -hmm. still we, when we record we have to stop constantly because they're getting called out at all hours of the day. Anyway, we were starting late at, we record late at night to, to get rid of the sirens. And there were still dogs barking and they would keep bleeding through the windows, getting in the mics, getting on our tracks. And Shane was mixed, he, Shane engineers. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh, he's in his cans. He's like, something is bleeding through this. He's like, God damn it, there's too much hound mouth on this track. <laughs> and that was kind of a term that was thrown around. Wow. What awesome. did you call yourselves before that? Um, nothing. Nothing, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was crunch time. Like, we needed a name. We were playing at, like, this little bar, Dillinger's, down the road. Mm -hmm. Like, how we got to put something on this bill. So it stuck. And, I mean, it's obviously a, a kind of a goofy name, but in the end, it's been good for us because it's if you google it it's literally the only thing that'll i mean it's a really up. good i mean actually you all are a very interesting band to google uh that that is it 
That is true. You are the only one, you know, connected with it. So it's, uh, and it's got that kind of, uh, it, it, it just has the name, you know, you, some, you got the name, you know, like, and, and I, and I hate this, to, you know, keep bringing these two bands up, but my morning jacket is an amazing name, especially for that band. Band of horses is an amazing name, especially for that band. You know, so you're looking at, uh, you know, you guys are kind of like the, the whole genre of w- where you sit is like at these like really like unique names come to think of it. So I thought they were emo bands before I heard them. <laughs> 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 like, that's the vibe. That's the vibe it put off. But surprising. It was like a pleasant surprise to hear that music come out of a band that, that had that name. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good correlation. I never even really thought about that. <laughs> and you grew of... up in emo bands. He's yeah. a totally emo guy. <laughs> that's Played awesome. A lot of emo bands in high school. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, so this is uh, this is Mictures Ten. This is definitely a. Um, this is a, a limited edition. Um, pretty hard to come by. Uh, annual release. You know, this is. Michter's is one of those brands now that everybody kind of chases. It's in that wave of like, uh, you know, really coveted right now. And they are, they put out really great whiskey. And so what you all have here is a, uh, is a really nice thing to start off with. Now I know you've had a, I know you've been drinking bourbon for a while. I just kind of want to give you a little, you know, tutorial on like how I taste from like a uh, an analytical perspective. I like to first like look at the color. You know, it's kind of like, you know, much like music is artistry, like the creation of, of whiskey is complete art. You know, it, it there is science to it, but there's a lot of art that goes into it. And and the color of, of whiskey is almost to me is like a painting because everyone is different. And when it goes into the barrel, it's as clear as the water from your tap. So every day it's in that wood, it's interacting, going in and out. And uh, this is absolutely uh, a beautiful color. Now, this is 10 years old, so it, this is going to be darker than a lot of other things that you will see. But, uh, you know, you look at this, this is like a nice amber color. Just, nice amber. Beautiful. Definitely. And then I like the swirled around. Kind of look at the legs and just just enjoy it, and then smell it. And when you when you smell when you smell whiskey, you smell it with your mouth open. So by smelling with your mouth open, you can pick up more than just like the alcohol fumes, and it's just kind of going go back and forth. And you'll see you'll pick up different spots uh, in your nose, and like it'll it'll smell very differently, like at the top. In the bottom, and then this side, this nostril will pick up something else, and that nostril. So it's, it's nice. like you kind of like wor- work it yeah. all around. Those frequencies, mm-hmm. gotta pick out those frequencies. <laughs> That's right. So this is smelling like coconut and chocolate, just really delicious to me. And then Don't you say that. See, I can't pick out. I can't actually articulate or pick out any flavors. Never been able to. But well, I probably don't put enough effort into it. Well, and you see, here's the thing: is you have an actual human talent, like you have actual uh, um, mu- musical talent. <laughs> no. This is this is all I got, you know, is, is my ability <laughs> to drink and describe things. So this well, is all. I'm I... envious of your talent. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I I would much rather be able to play the guitar and sing. I tell you that. <laughs> all right, so now you put a little bit on your tongue. Fill it on the you want you just want to get full surface area so you want to get a little bit on your tip the middle the back you'll feel the sweetness on the front the the savory and bitterness in the middle and a little bit of bitterness toward the back and mm-hmm. spice toward the back and then on the sides if you feel stuff on your sides there's a very good chance you have a super palate so here we go I like to think I have a super palate. <laughs> Mm. That is tasting mighty good. Right? Wow. Mighty good. good. The last time I've ever done that. So much different when you put a little attention and focus (laughs) on it. It really is. I mean, it it is, um, 
when you when you focus on what you're tasting, you will be amazed of like what you pick up. I mean, you can you can apply this to everything. Like, just get a regular yeah. McDonald's cheeseburger, right? And like, actually think about what you're eating. Which we did that yesterday. We got the new chicken sandwich from McDonald's. We had we actually drove to Indy yesterday and got in the van again for the first time in a long time. We did a oh, live wow. stream in Indy, and uh, classic. Just for nostalgic purposes, we had to go to McDonald's. Day the new chicken sandwich came out, and uh, it was garbage. <laughs> Absolute garbage. So where's your, what's your chicken sandwich of choice? I mean, Chick-fil-A is pretty hard to beat. The Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich has been yeah. pretty fire lately. Yeah. For fast food goals, did, yeah. Did you ever do the um, Popeye's chicken sandwich that, you know, people like held up stores for and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never got one. I got my hands on one and I don't know. It was too messy for me. It was good. Yeah. But the sauce they put on it was too. What kind of sauce was it? It was some sort of like mayo based, like hot sauce. I mean, it was delicious, but I guess whoever made mine was just like dumping it on. Mm. I'm I'm a big fan of the, um, uh, of like the hot chicken, you know, like that Nashville hot stuff. Yeah. But it can, it can take a toll on your palate. Like th- that type of spice, like yeah. it, it, can, it can beat me up. Like Indian spices and typical, like, um, you know, Mexican spices don't bother me, but something about what they put on the, the in hot chicken tears me up, you know? I know. So, it's like uh, a chemical uh, hot yeah, almost. The, yeah. The extracts. Yeah. So we went to, we did Hattie B's when it first opened in Nashville. We got that, the shut the clock up. And it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it burned my, when we were in a bus too, so it's kind of weird because you can't, can't go to the bathroom in a bus, really. No, so no you number just, twos. there's just <laughs> this extract fire burning through your intestines for like five days. Mm. Anyway, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, it, I never know where my interviews are going to go. But I did not. I did not know we would be breaking down the intestinal damage by hot chicken. But it's nope. real. Yeah, it's a real issue. Real. It's a real issue, America. <laughs> and we keep going back back to the hot chicken because it's so damn good. <laughs> so damn good. Uh, so obviously, you apply this. I mean, do you, like every meal you eat, do you do you put that much? Fo- I mean. Some degree well, of focus. I have I have two young kids, so I have a seven year old and a two year old, yeah, and and a puppy that I feel like just tearing up our house all the time. So I don't know if I really apply my mindfulness tasting all the time right now, but I try to, and um, you know I find um, I, I find like a, a lot of a lot of wonderful tastes and joys in like simple things like a piece of bacon, which, um, I don't, I'm not a fan. Like some bacon's like overly salty. Mm -hmm. I like uncured bacon, just like, you know, the natural essence of the, of of the pork. It's just like, and it's nice and crispy, that kind of stuff. Like, and, and like maybe some cheese, that kind of stuff that has like texture and, you know, places you just hits all kinds of different parts on your tongue. That's the kind of stuff I really, really like. You know, totally. chasing and a, and a tasting. I've been. Not, I'm not a very good cook, so I just like I basically just chop up vegetables and I eat like some raw vegetables and raw vegetables and like unsalted nuts are incredible. Absolutely. Just the basic flavor of what the mm-hmm. thing is is awesome. And it's good for you. You know. Right. So yeah, you can't no, beat I've that. Always done. Uh, uh, salty cashews is like my go-to snack and finally got some that are just unsalted. unsalted. It's, it's incri- so much it's better. a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if you get them where they're like raw and they're like real chewy and everything, mm-hmm. I mean, you'll, uh, I actually, you can feel like a bitterness in the cashew that you can't when it's been roasted. Cashews are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And if you can get, if you can get cashews from Tanzania, to me, the Tanzanian cashews, are the best, absolute best. Where do you where do you find those? Tanzania. <laughs> uh, I had a I had a really good friend from Tanzania, and he would bring me cashews from Tanzania all the time. He there's uh 
you can find like uh, specialty markets that that carry uh, cashews based on the uh, country of origin. Okay. And I'm no I'm no cashew critic. I can just tell you that the the Tanzanian cashews were amazing. Nice. So. So let's uh, if you if you all are ready for whiskey number two, yeah. So how have you all been holding up during uh, COVID? Ups and downs, basically yeah. just life. It's the new the new life. Been writing a lot more, recording. We'll go with the uh, two ninety one. Yeah. What you? What about you? You've been just been doing a bunch of interviews. Uh, yeah, a bunch of interviews, a lot of, uh, you know, drinking for a living, uh, really suited, really suited me during the pandemic. Um, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I had, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of things open up, but I mean, I, I went, uh, I went from, you know, doing events with like the Foo Fighters and, you know, getting stuff, uh, you know, scheduled with like Metallica to like nothing, overnight and i had like a national like tasting thing that was going to be set up with a major hotel chain just boom gone you know all like like that and yeah. and it just uh it was it, it was really depressing and i just kind of like i started doing a lot more on youtube and i started putting a lot more focus on this podcast and yeah and you know things end up working out end totally. up working out adapt figure it out it's just yeah. been a long one. It's been a What's long that? couple of years. It, it's been yeah. a long couple of years. <laughs> it Seriously. it has, and and you know, for for a band like like uh, you know Houndmouth, you know, you all are you all are kind of in that you're you're at that stage where people are discovering you for the first time, and when people find you, they're like, "Wow, these guys are good." You know, I want to see them, but I I have to imagine that you know once uh, once we're able to open up and, and play at places, you all are just chomping at the bit to get on stage. Man, like, it really has been wild because we are, like, such a tour-dependent band mm -hmm. to, for us to make a living. So it's definitely been hard. and uh, But also kind of really good reset button, I think, in our lives. Yeah. Yeah, but you do it so much when you tour every day, you're like, why am I doing this? You know, it's all like custom muscle memory. And then yeah. you take a break and you're like, oh yeah, I, well, I want to get back out there for the right reasons. Right. Well, you know, uh, the, if there's one thing that I know is that like, you know, we need music. Uh, I, I think this past year has, has, has shown me more than anything that all, all the wonderful experiences I've had in my life of with live music that did that didn't come from just w needing something to do that right. came from a craving in my soul to see it. yeah for sure i mean i i needed it and and like uh i just i just did an episode uh for dash radio about like how much my soul craves it and how yeah. much i hate hearing this oh we're gonna have another wave of covid everything's yeah. opened up everything's shut down i'm just like or can we live again? You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And live streams just don't cut it for music. No. They never will. You have, to, close. You have to hear a sub <laughs> yeah. thumping. I mean, I, I've I've seen some great live streams. Um, same. I've been a part of a lot of them, but yeah. it's not the same. Totally. It's not the same. You got to well, hear that kick drum in your chest. No, no, none of us needed to go down the depressing route here. So let's, <laughs> let's get back on let's track. Get, let's get to uh, 291. Now, this is distilled in Colorado, and this is a kind of a nice like piece of evidence that bourbon doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. It can be made anywhere in the United States. Right. And uh, so this uh, distiller, Michael Myers is his name. He's not the Halloween guy, but, you know, it's kind of funny. But he, <laughs> like, he distills it, puts it in smaller barrels, and then he finishes it with Aspen staves. And so like he's the only distiller I know of who is using Aspen wood in his, in, in a stave uh, as part of his aging process. So that yields a real smoky, very different kind of uh, style of bourbon. So what you are about to taste now is going to be drastically different 
than what you just tasted. Yes, and it's, yeah, it'll be heightened coming off that mixer. Mixers, a little lighter. Whoa, so sweet smelling. I catch my breath after that. Whoa. I've By never way, tasted anything like that. That is 121 proof. Yep. Wow. That is, yeah, for swishing it around every. For 121 proof, that is extremely delicious. <laughs> wow. Relatively smooth. Mm -hmm. Extremely delicious. What you get out of that? It's a, comp yeah, it? I mean, it's taking on like. You know, it's one of those where you got to have an open mind when you're tasting whiskey. If you think that everything should be tasting like the Michter's 10-year-old we just had, you're not going to enjoy a lot of whiskeys. So you have to, you have to like, you know, taste everything uh, for, for what they are. It's kind of like music, you know. I, I, I love all genres of music. And when I'm, when I'm listening to you all, I don't have my hat on for, you know, rap or country or heavy metal. I know I know what I'm listening to, and so I have an you know appreciation for that sound. And you know, a lot of times in whiskey, people will be like, "I only like Kentucky bourbon, and that's only where I'm going to go," and that's fine. But there's so many beautiful expo explorations of American whiskey, and 291 is one of those incredible stories. Uh, and what I get in this is like some hops, so it's like a little bit like a beer for me. So just like imagine like a. Um, a, a, a hoppy kind of not an IPA, but just a hoppy beer a good with hop. with some smoke behind it, and maybe just a hint of like marijuana. I, I always get a little bit of marijuana in this, just a hint. Yeah. Do you ever get like a, in a, like objects that aren't edible, like a, like CD cases or something like that, or Do like I a. Like tennis balls or anything like that. I, I've gotten uh, in in my whiskey career. I have tasted like drywall. I've tasted yeah. plastic. <laughs> uh, I've smelled Oops. dead cat. Uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I've 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 had a lot of things that I've smelled or tasted in whiskey. Oh, that's hilarious! Yeah. And the funny that thing is, 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 is those distillers don't put them in there, you know, on purpose. It's just their technique, or it can be something like right. the the closure that they have. You know, it's just like little things can have an influence on it that they that they didn't know. So, how did you all how did you all meet? Because you're a fairly large band, and like you know, you know, you you know, did you did you all kind of like come together all at once, or would did you put newspaper ads out looking for one another? I mean, how did that, how did you all get together? I was playing, I started playing, a, well, first I played with Zach in uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Mm -hmm. We played at this bar, we played in a Motown band. And um, that kind of eventually fizzled out. And I started playing acoustic music with Katie. And then mm -hmm. when that fizzled out, I called Shane because he was working on a project and he invited me over to this house in downtown New Albany. There's like a, he had a drum kit set up in here, some like minimal recording equipment. And basically I came over here in 2011 and just never left. And then when I met Shane, I was like, we, I called Katie immediately, called Zach immediately. And we all just got over here and started, started playing and no, everybody played guitar. So we've all picked up different instruments i got to stay on guitar though yeah, right on the, did, did you <laughs> all ever did you ever play in that little amphitheater there in jeffersonville right on uh, the water no we were supposed to but something something fell through i can't remember what happened that's such a gorgeous uh spot to I'm watch music you, jeff's kind of uh, you know it's in competition with new albany but it's kind of popping off it's awesome yeah. i mean it's gonna flood there nine times out of ten um, straight up i don't even think you can get flood insurance in jeff I They're mean, it's like, you're, you're screwed. It's bad, but you know, like you get, they got that candy store, you know, Shemp's candy store. Yeah, yeah. 
love that place. I mean, it's a great little town. Great pizza there. Um, yeah. And but New Albany, you know, New Albany is pretty cool. Yeah, you ever come over here? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I you used to, a- I used to more regularly. Uh, you know, I've, I've it died down a little bit, but yeah, I, I go over there in Clarksville and Jeffersonville, yeah, yeah. but. You got to come back over. You should come over here sometime. Actually, it, it, house. I actually thought a little bit about like maybe doing this um, all in person. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to move this and that and all this equipment. And right. uh, we'll just do it virtual. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, we, we, here, <laughs> here we talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here, here we talk about like all of this. uh like I can't wait for live events again, and here I am, you know, blocking myself from doing it. So maybe, maybe these virtual experiences have like turned me into a little bit of a lazy bug when it comes to the travel again. But uh, you know, uh, definitely, we definitely have to get in, in person. I I want to see. I'd like to do something like get get you all on stage in Jeffersonville, and like have a um, have some of the restaurant owners there. I know, like have us let us do like a private tasting in their restaurant and then your your fans can come in there and we all drink bourbon yeah that's what yes. i'm talking that's what i'm talking about right there totally like and then time. you come over here and we'll we'll bring we'll supply the drinks except it's going to be just everything's going to be mixed with coke <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then four in the morning the uh the hounds won't shut up no yeah uh-huh. yeah all right, so what's the verdict here on the 291? I know you liked it, but where where is it? Where is this sitting in your like um like when you want to taste it? What's it remind you of? I would think it's it's pretty high up on my drinkability list, but I would have to probably either cut it or put some ice in it. If, I don't know if that's sacrilege, but No, absolutely not. I think this would go really good with ice. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I can totally see drinking this at a nice restaurant. It's a few things. It's a fancy boy. It, it feels fancy to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fancy. It's a fancy pour. <laughs> and so, do you? Does this remind you of any of your? Does this inspire you for like? Did either of the two bourbons inspire you music wise? Like you, you taste it, you feel it, and you're like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely more open-minded with with the guy we're drinking now, with Colorado. Okay. What's the name again? Can you say that name again? 291. Two, oh, okay, just 291. Two, yeah, 291. Yeah, but in terms of, like, comfort, usually I'm a, I'm a kind of a creature of comfort. So if I'm, like, writing, I want something really familiar to mm. so I can get back to that, like, my, I can kind of, like, get to par mm-hmm. and go. But also, you want to grow as a songwriter, so maybe something feeling a little bit more experimental, you know, get a Moog out or something. Mm-hmm. Might go with the the two ninety one. All right, I love it. All right, how how are we feeling? Uh, you know, because you do want to play a couple songs here. Do you want to keep going on the whiskey tasting, or do you want to do you want to jump in the song? Yeah, let's do a break into a song. Sure, this is still going. And I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to take myself out of view, so you're just going to see yourself, and I'll pop back in after okay. uh, after y'all are done playing. i 
Well, that was lovely. There's a little bit of a house tune here on a nice whiskey drinking afternoon. <laughs> I, I almost I almost feel like an old school New York DJ coming in off of that. That was oh, awesome. Nice. And we're Thanks. Yeah, man, we got all these little keyboards with batteries in them. So you just keep them in your lap. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's badass. They sound nice. There's like two one inch speakers in there. That's These wooden awesome. speakers will blow your mind. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah, my uh, my boys are just now getting. I mean, they're two and seven, and they're just now getting into. Well, they're they're into music, you know. So they yeah. nice. they're they're constantly playing on the piano. My my seven year olds in drum lessons, Sweet. and yes. and um, my two year old, we think he's going to be a solo v- vocalist because. All he wants to do is watch YouTube channel, YouTube videos of 1980s uh, bands like Tears, Tears for Fears, and Billy Idol. Well, you know, it's it's well, it's awesome, man. That is awesome. When did your <laughs> love? Daughter's... When did your love for music begin? Honestly, don't even know. When I was like instantaneous, driving around in the car with my dad. He put on like, a... and if kind of Ray Charles and Randy Newman to start. And oh then... wow. And then we got into some weird stuff. Like we went down the meatloaf path. He's like, check this out. And then, uh, um, and then eventually I started like the first CD I bought was the strokes that like their big, their big album. This is it. And, uh, and then I showed it to my dad cause he was like my main resource of music. He's like, I don't like this very much. <laughs> and I was, I kind of like knew I was onto something at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> branching off. But, uh, yeah. And then, like, I started playing guitar when I was 12 just because I liked the way it looked. Guitars just look awesome. They do look cool. (laughs) And then, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan playing a guitar, he looked good playing it. Yeah. And then I just started practicing and, like, standing in a mirror. Like, I want to play like Stevie. I want my right hand to do that thing that he does. Mm -hmm. Like, playing one note, but it's like you're strumming. So I Stevie Ray Vaughan was like your like your guitar idol. He was my he was my guy for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, may he, sure may he rest like, in peace. No doubt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it wasn't until like maybe 
2014 or 15 that you like changed up your pedals I still haven't changed. Stevie Ray Vaughan always played. With, oh yeah, yeah. Stevie Ray Vaughan always played with two tube screamers, and that's like to this day, it's all I use. One distortion wow. pedal, and then when you want more distortion, you just put another one on it. Now you said you had a daughter. Uh, she's getting oh, yeah. into music. Yeah, I've been showing her uh, Arcade Fire music videos. She all about it. She's all about those art art videos. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. How old? She is five, oh, and I have great. another daughter that is almost two. Oh, that's great! Our our kids are almost the same age. Are very close. Right. Yep. So, so here we go. Let's go to the uh, Penelope Bourbon here. This is going to be lower in proof. It's eighty proof. It's four grain. And we did already drink that one. You've already <laughs> drank everything out of it. Well, yeah, that's no, it. We have a little nip left. A this little is nip. A, this uh, is a rye. Oh, I thought that we was have so. a rye left. Penelope. You have a rye left? Yeah, peerless single barrel rye. I sent you peerless, huh? Oh, very nice. Well, I got I got my tasting sheet all screwed up with you boys. Well, I mean, you can't leave full <laughs> bottles of bourbon <laughs> in this house for a month. <laughs> well, I, I I will say this too, like normally, uh, normally Allison, my my director of operations, sets everything out for me. She didn't do that for me today, and this is like an example of how like I, I'm really good on camera and I can do these things. But when it comes to like organizing all the tastings and everything, I suck. Like I mean, hey. I'm so bad at that stuff. Yeah, same prepping. I mean, that's why managers are godsends. <laughs> well, and you all have a you all have a great manager. Yeah, Chris is killing it. Yeah, I mean, you know, he reps uh his team reps Jack Harlow too, you know? Yep. I mean you 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 know, you're in with some good people there. No doubt. So yeah, I'll yeah. I'll just give the Penelope just a little taste and talk about it a little bit and then we'll move on to the to the Peerless. Yeah. But uh Penelope is a new kind of a new brand on the scene. Really great people, you know, and this is like it's one of those things you get really excited about, you know, when you get new blood into something and and they start experimenting and doing new things like they're doing like four grains. Most people do three grains and, you know, they're adding in. Let's see. We'll give you the they got corn, rye, wheat and malted barley. Now, that sounds like that's pretty simple, but it's actually a hard combo to put together. And so I think they did a really good job with this. And at 80 proof, it's non shell filtered. It it tastes pretty good. Let me, yeah, let that's me why just we give, give it a taste. taste that one. You've already crushed it. Yeah, that was <laughs> it was our fave, and we saw eighty proof, and it's like it was just so smooth. Yeah, I mean to me, it tastes like a like a piece of cornbread with some honey and and pepper on it. It's a uh, it's a really really nice little little flavor there. Can't get off that. Yeah. Now. I believe did did it say on the on the peerless single barrel what the proof was on it? One ten point four. Well, shoot, I got the wrong one, but we're gonna sip some peerless uh, uh, together anyway. Now, here's the thing about peerless: it's just down the road from you boys, and really? I I can see you all playing there. You know, it's downtown Louisville. And like I said at the top, you all are pretty much like, you know, Louvillians because you're in New Albany. Yeah, I mean, we've been going to Louisville since we were born, so there's no difference. This is the suburb. This is the Brooklyn of Louisville. That is a that is a Jim <laughs> James. Jim James told us that one time he was over here. He said this is the Brooklyn of Louisville. That's pretty accurate, probably. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, we got the Sherman Mitten Bridge. Yeah. No tolls, baby. No <laughs> yeah. tolls. Mm, yeah, so rye whiskey, of course, is its own category. It's completely different. The bourbon has to be at least 51% rye, whereas uh, bourbon has to be at least 51% corn. So 
almost like a lavender in a weird way. Yeah? That's crazy. I was getting like chamomile. Hmm. Like it's sweet. But not too sweet. Mm -hmm. So when we when we came back in from uh from the uh from playing we got were the screen got you got cut off a little bit there the fish eyes eyeing you a little too much shane a little, oh, okay. a little bit being there you go so, I'm gonna shoot over yeah that's, that's better better yeah that's good yeah, that's good good, good. Sweet. So the peerless the the peerless rye is uh I, mine is uh 108.9 proof yours is 110 um you mentioned chamomile um uh what was what was the one you mentioned I was getting lavender some lavender yeah so so we have a lot of uh you know some herbal kind of tea notes and then you know I I I just get I get a lot of savory stuff with when I taste peerless, so like fresh baked bread. You know, it's just something as simple as a fresh baked uh, rye bread. But I also get in trouble when I drink uh, peerless because it's so tasty, and I keep tasting something else when I taste it. So I'm like, I gotta check that out again. Oh, one more time, let me taste that again. So you gotta be careful. I gotta be careful when I sip on some peerless. <laughs> Do you have a favorite rye? Or is that a weird? Is that a broad, too broad of a question? Um. So there's favorite rye, and then there's available rye. Right. My favorite available rye is uh, probably Old Forester rye. It's like twenty three bucks. You can find it almost anywhere. Okay. And then my favorite, my favorite all time rye is probably a twenty uh, five year old Michter's. From 2010, okay, it was gorgeous. Cool, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of good rides out there. Yeah, I was Indiana makes most of them. Angel's Envy Rye was was pretty nice for a while. Yeah, Angel's Envy Rye is uh, definitely hard to get on the sweeter side. You know, uh -huh. they're they're finishing it in in uh, Caribbean rum barrels, so it's a very different uh, very different style. Uh, you know, than Peerless. Right. I got a, my mother-in-law a bottle of that for uh, her birthday and just blew her mind. She loved it. So the much. angels, the angels right, yeah. right. So, I mean, you're look, you're, you, you must be, you must be the, uh, the good, uh, the good son-in-law after that. <laughs> oh, she's great. I always was like scared. You know, you always hear the evil mother-in-law, but I lucked mm. out. <laughs> my, my, I mean, I, I'm saying I'm right there with you. My mother-in-law is amazing. It's, uh, it is, it is always good when you get, uh, when you get the right one. But, uh, you know, family-wise, though, that I think that's that's something I never really talk about with band members. But, you know, the family's right there with you all through through the thick and the thin and the and the highs and lows. I mean, um, and I know. I know this 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 time has probably not been their favorite just to see you around, but not because they don't want you around, because they know like you want to be out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean totally. it was, it has been, like I said earlier, it's been awesome to kinda of like reset and I have a almost two year old now and it's just been like awesome to be there every day. Yeah. And uh like knowing that I wouldn't have that if we were touring all the time right. is pretty wild to think about. It's like what I'll, I miss. Yeah. You know, I, like, I was gone for like the first two years of Margo's life. Wow. Just relentless touring. So we were gone for like 280 days one year. That was like the year before Margo was born, but the touring was still going strong. Wow. 280 days. Did like <laughs> a band like, like like or did a company like Live Nation just like – book you constantly or do you guys yeah. were just all over the place we were yeah we were doing every festival and the late night and um private shows so it's like everything you can think of mm -hmm. wow <laughs> it was a blur i don't even yeah. i don't remember Truly. 2015 <laughs> 
But at the same time, though, imagine all the joy you brought, folks. Oh, totally. Wonderful. And like this time now being quarantined up and reflecting about all that because it was a blur. And then like you start talking about it and so many memories just resurface. We had a blast. All we right. So what's because you're just in it. So what is what is um, that's a I mean, you got quite the resume for playing in places. Um, what is your favorite venue to play? Um, I mean, off the top, I'm just going to go headliners in Louisville. There's something about it because I grew up going shows there and then getting on the stage was it was like the same feeling I got when I was watching shows there. It's like um, same sound. It's like my ears were in tune with the room because I'd mm-hmm. seen so many shows there. So everything just kind of flowed. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah head, Headliners uh, is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, wonderful. I mean, Red Rocks is great. Red Rocks. Even though our last time we were playing there, our console blew up, like actually died in the middle of our set. Yeah. We only played like three songs. Yeah, I played three songs and had to like walk off in front of 10,000 people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but you still got paid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't concern myself with that. <laughs> the concern is a frivolous thing. Once again, that's what managers are for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd also have to say the nine thirty club in DC is great because I got a cousin that lives there, and that's basically the only time I see them is when we play. Mm-hmm. You see, and they got cupcakes. They yeah, really yeah. get cupcakes there. Yeah. DC and also next time you all are in DC, um, the best whiskey bar in the world, Jack Rose is there. Jack Rose, uh, he's got thousands upon thousands of uh, of whiskeys. Yeah. It's wow. it's amazing. Have to make sure you guys you know check that out next time. Definitely. And this is one where you know he would definitely have, uh, and that's the. Never this one. <laughs> Old Fitz. You drank this one already? Oh yeah. Oh well shit. I know. <laughs> Sorry. I know. Well I can't I can't drink this one without you. But here, <laughs> here's here's a look at it. It's the old Fitz 14 year old. <laughs> it's probably the coolest bottle. It's a really nice bottle. It's a nice Great bottle. Design. All right, so since we have tasted through these and you know should we say since you already crushed the old fits, that was your favorite? For or sure. Can, can or can you name a favorite that you tasted today? Um, Michter's was a great staple. Two ninety one, awesome. Um, I still remember the Penelope. I would say the Penelope was probably a fave. Yeah. yeah so I- Penelope is the winner. I think so. Yeah. We'll go with that. And we didn't even drink that today. <laughs> it, it it was so good, uh, you couldn't it's stop stuck. thinking about it. <laughs> I need you to send us some more of that so we can actually taste it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'll definitely get you taken care of on that <laughs> one. Uh, and, and I know you got, you all got one more, one more song, but before we... Before we get into into that, are you all working on any new music or any anything cool that you want to talk about? Always. Yeah, we brought some. So we brought we started recording an album here. We've never recorded a record in this house. So an engineer and a producer came over and we we did a batch of songs, which should be coming out. We should start releasing stuff in April. Um, and we'll play one of them for you next, but, uh, and then we're still just recording day to day. Um, nice. what, what else we got going on? And just, we finally have like honed in our studio here and yeah, we're just writing, writing and trying our best to make it sound good. And what's, what's the new album called? Uh, we don't have a name for it yet, but we got some ideas. I don't know. Mm. All right. Let's uh yeah. I, I have an idea. Maybe maybe it's Penelope. 
you know, you get a you get a case of the Penelope. I was hey, that actually is really nice. <laughs> the two ninety one Victor's Penelope Peerless. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get you get booked on like uh you get booked on a show and they're like, Why did you name it Penelope? Uh well we were uh we were drinking a lot of that bourbon at the time and it, it sounded like a good idea, but looking back, that was fucking dumb. Uh, <laughs> Again, our band name is Houndmouth. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take it away, gentlemen. All right. And again, I'll, I'm going to go yeah. off, and then uh, when you when you all are done, I'll come back on. Cool. Okay, I got one. Chartreuse, Fancy that seeing you out here Let's get to going soon Cause the distant sound is upstairs loud and booming Yeah, we better get moving Heartbreak Hotel White lies and fairly well Well, gentlemen, that was beautiful, and that's going to be on the new album coming out. Correct. Yeah. And that's uh, and we know the name of this song though. You're not changing. You're not changing it as you get into the discussion. This is this is good. For, right. This is good yeah, for this, you. Yeah, this song's called "Good for You." So, I mean, 
listen, you've got you've got like a you've got a song there that can carry an album. I'm, they say sometimes it's okay to name uh, name an album after a song. And that's true. I mean, just th- throwing that in there, throwing that in there. That's a good song. Yeah, that's actually, a- I mean, to be honest, we have a set name for an album. It's just a little odd. I like odd. <laughs> We're gonna call it Wolf Glass. Wolf Wolf the Lax. Wolf Glass. Wolf Glass. Like the animal. Yeah. Well, you know what that that fits in your brand, Hound Mouth totally. Wolf Glass. Another Googleable, highly Googleable name. Googleable. <laughs> I mean, you might get put up there with some like special brands of meth, but it's uh. <laughs> I didn't got, know meth was getting marketed so well. Oh, uh, listen, that's according to my years of watching Breaking Bad, anyway. But, uh, but uh, you know, listen, I I got to tell you, it, it it really is a pleasure sitting down with you all because um, I I have I have um, listened to you. I've never seen you live, but I I've listened to you all, you know, for a while as we both kind of pour a little bit more of the Michter's uh, tenure yep. here. <laughs> yep. Um, I have uh, listened to you all, and I and I, I, I feel I feel that kind of local connection. And I only have people on my show whose music I like. And you know, I sometimes get, sometimes people will say, "Man, you're you're kind of a fanboy." I'm like, "Duh," you know. <laughs> I I love music, and and I'm not a uh, I'm not a music critic. I'm a whiskey critic, and like I I just I feel for you all right now. You know, but I'm also glad that you all didn't let COVID keep you down. You're still doing music. You got an album coming out, and I, I think that says a lot about you all as a band. And I'll tell you, man, never lose that. Never lose that. And you know, there will be challenges that will come, but uh, no never, never That's lose nice that connectivity. Yeah, that was, hey, cheers. cheers! Thank you. Thank you. Cheers! And Thank- um, you'll need. You do need to come over to the house, and we're going to be doing live sessions. And uh, it would be awesome to have you over sometime. I'd love, I'd love that. But I'm also half afraid, like the cops are going to come over, and you know, something bad's going to happen. Like, I mean, the, the cops have calmed down in, in New Albany. Yeah. <laughs> they really have. It's That's pretty good. safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was a rough few years. Yeah, there. it was. <laughs> they shot me. Shane got hammered pretty good. <laughs> but all in good fun, though. All in good fun. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. This was a blast for me, and um, it was great to hear you all play. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. And we got to get you on uh, the in the amphitheater in Jeffersonville. Like I, I'm Let's gonna make, make a that couple, happen. I'll make a couple phone Here's calls because I want to see you there and see the Louisville backdrop. I just, I just, I just love that stage so much. So. No doubt, warm weather's coming. It is indeed. And we can be socially distanced. That'd be a great place to have exactly. a concert. No know? doubt. You know, be we'll safe. I like where your head's at. <laughs> cheers, gentlemen. Hey, cheers. All right, be safe. You too. Oh, also, also, vodka sucks. That's kind of my motto. I didn't tell you that Vodka yet, sucks. Sweet. Vodka sucks. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>